What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Coach Zach podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rance, certified life coach, certified nutritionist, mental health advocate, meditation master. No, I'm kidding. But seriously, though, thanks so much for stopping by. I like to bring guests on here that are leaders in their chosen field, whether it's a doctor or nutritionist or maybe just another life coach or spirituality coach. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I can share it with you guys. I hope you enjoy. A lot of fucking good things. Really? <laughs> Tell me. It's really exciting. Um, I, I, I mean, are we just jumping in? We can just jump right in if you want. Yeah. I think you should because I think that it's part of like it's exactly what you talk about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not like, you know, I'm having a great hair day. Fuck that shit. That's, you know, old. I'm having a good me day. <laughs> yes, I love it. So yeah. tell me all the good things that are going on right now. Oh, my God, Zach. I remember remember when we first met like uh, two years ago, right? It mm-hmm. was in it. At the finale party? Yeah. And really, we, the very, very first time we met was the pool. Mm-hmm. And um, because that was like the finale party, but it was beforehand. And, you know, that was like the first outing that I'd had since I had loyal and really just like I kind of went into a hole after Big Brother 19. And honestly, like my troubles started before that, if I want to be completely accountable for myself, which I am. And, you know, for the last three plus years, I've just been str- like in this avalanche and trying to swim up it. And, um, you know, coming out of big brother again was no easy feat. And last year I kind of started putting myself back together, but it just was, I couldn't, I couldn't connect it. You know, I was really trying, I was doing all the work and I just couldn't get that last little breakthrough. And in the last few months, uh, I've been able to, and so I've really, it seems like the last few years I was in school learning doing the work, grinding, hustling, reconfiguring my life, reconfiguring myself. And then now it's like, okay, I'm, I'm graduating and I'm being set free. And I'm now I'm getting the, the beautiful benefits of all that hard work. And you still have to tend the garden, right? You still have to do the work, but it's finally like the, the light has come back and it's really incredible because for a very long time and some very significant moments, I didn't think it was going to. Wow. So that's how I'm doing. How are you wow. doing? <laughs> Big changes. I mean, coming off Big Brother is not easy, right? I can't even imagine coming off a second time. What was the biggest difference? Um, the first, I mean, the first time, I mean, both times were just significantly different because the first time I broke my foot, I was like having mm. a lot of, you know, who am I without my, you know, being an athlete, a lot of like personal identity things, which um, was the first thing that I needed to shed. And then this time I came out and, you know, like I was already kind of doing my own thing, but the, the heightened opinion that is a sliver, it might be accurate for that isolated moment, but it was just so inaccurate for who I am. And it just made me, and so that, so like a lot of hate, right. A lot of scrutiny, a lot of um, just harsh opinion, which that's what we subject ourselves to when we agree to go to big brother. I don't think that it's okay just because we agree to it. Um, and then kind of taking that and saying, okay, I don't believe that I am what this, uh, movement is saying about me. However, I need to look at and examine deeply what I did to provoke that thought. And, whether, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, I, it was my responsibility to look, to examine myself even further and continue to educate myself on places that I thought I was educated. Um, but that's not enough, you know, Mm -hmm. knowing isn't enough. And, and that's what I was kind of learning from that. So this very harsh, uh, public reaction, um, that just seems like it's really intensified and really it's just a small group making a lot of noise. Right. Um, but it it's like, I'm not listening to them. I'm not believing them, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to take that and I'm going to look over here and let, let me look and see where I see the cracks Right. or where is my blind spot? And right. so it really helped me uh, continue 
to deepen my connection with myself and grow and really be Amazing. able to come out of like, okay, yeah. <laughs> and there was you know, another lesson. <laughs> right. Another lesson. And a lot of times, not even your situation, because the same thing happened to me too. I mean, I was getting a lot of pushback from a lot of things I did after Big Brother and, you know, seeing other people's point of view and genuinely trying to be empathetic towards their opinion and towards your view is how we grow. So whether we think they're right or they're completely wrong, and they could be completely wrong. And not, I'm not talking about just your situation. I'm talking about in general, in life. Mm -hmm. Other people that have different viewpoints on us or other people that are talking crap about us or other people that are slandering our name, it's important for us to be humble and have humility and try to see their point of view right? Mm -hmm. Regardless if they're right or wrong. And that opens us up to our blind spots that helps us grow. So like having humility across the board is such a powerful character trait that helps us learn and grow as people and become better versions of ourselves. So I'm proud of you for doing that. And I think that's something that not only every reality TV person should take or every famous person should take, but not calling other people normal, but just like everyone, like no matter what, like oh, if someone has, sure. yeah, like if someone has a different political view than you or religious view than you, or maybe like a different view on vaccinations or other things like this. Okay. Like it's important to see it from their point of view, not saying they're right or wrong, but you know that, and that's how we like start, start to disable a lot of the divisiveness and a lot of the polarity that we have in Humanity, not just in America. Obviously, America has like the most div divisive type polarizing yeah. stuff in the world. But at the end of the day, like trying to see it from other people's point of view. So tell me more about like the amazing things you're looking forward to. Like tell me about the incredible things in your life right now. Oh, man. You know, just kind of like what you were saying, just um, listening a lot more, trying to understand where somebody's coming from before, you know, listening to hear, not react. And I think that that is that should be across the board. And honestly, I just, I'm, <laughs> we're digging in Zach. Okay. So I've just been doing the last, really the three years I've been doing a lot of, um, personal work with my therapist and unpacking a lot of this unknown and undiscovered trauma that I have from my childhood. And when I say trauma, it doesn't have to necessarily be like, oh my God, I was, you know, thrown around or beaten or whatever. Uh, some of it is, but also it's the, you know, the, my perspective as a child in regards to my family and my environment. And that develops a lot of our day-to-day -day behaviors that we don't even realize. We're just like, well, that's just the way that I am. Well, <laughs> there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. And I kept running in the same cycle and keep being, you know, like kept like self-sabotaging and then like couldn't really deeply connect with somebody. And just like, I had all of these, these blockades and I just was like, I'm tired of, of fighting myself. And so I, I started digging in and I was like, there has to be a better way to live this life. This isn't it. Like I, I'm so blessed. I have such an amazing life and I can't be grateful for it. And I can't live it the way that I feel like I should be living it or want to. So I just started digging in, um, you know, like on my personality, uh, flaws that I, I believe were flaws or, or like my challenges and man, you know, like just because you read it doesn't mean you learn it. And just because you learn it doesn't mean you apply it. And so it's just been a really big, long journey for me mm -hmm. and what it felt like upstream for a long time. And now like, honestly, Zach, everything that I've been praying for, everything that I've been working towards, everything that I have imagined and manifested and wrote down is literally falling into place. And I have to contribute that to, you know, God. And then the, the last few years of this really very hard journey that had to build to the lesson and then also have to deepen my gratitude, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, in order to be able to really receive it completely. Love that. What do you yeah. think were some of the action steps that you took to manifest all these goals and dreams? Man, I had to look at myself and realize that I wasn't who I said I was or who I thought I was. That was the first thing. I was like, you know, I'm the common denominator between all of these things. And, you know, it's not like, it's so much more than just saying, well, this is my habit. 
it's it's like this ingrained behavior um that we don't even realize that we have and when you say when i you just want to be better for everything and mm-hmm. and so i just um i started you know doing the work is it's like what the fuck does that mean right we're right. like ah oh, do the work do the work what the fuck okay it means that like I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and know Mm -hmm. that today I showed up or today I didn't show up. And, Mm -hmm. you know, just all these like white lies that you tell yourself, they are, they are like sprinkling toxicity on your beautiful garden because they, they tell you that it's okay to skip this or not tell all of that truth. And it, it really affects your foundation. Mm -hmm. So just, honestly, just being really ruthlessly accountable for myself and protecting that as well. <laughs> yeah. Ruthlessly accountable. I love that. I was like, you know, I, I was thinking about all the things that you just mentioned about looking at yourself in the mirror and all those white lies you tell ourself. And I love how you, the metaphor you said about sprinkling toxic toxicity in our beautiful garden. You know, the most important of that thing about that and the foundation for that is being honest with ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's a, it, not saying it's okay to tell white lies, but like, you know, what you tell other people about what you do with your life, like your habits, like, you know, I'm here telling people I meditate for 30 minutes a day. Like, do I actually meditate for 30 minutes a day? Well, yeah, I do meditate for 30 minutes a, say every single day. I tell everyone I, I read, you know, 50 books a year. Do I actually read 50 books a year? Yeah, yeah, I do for sure. And there are a lot of times where, you know, I am lying to myself. You know, I don't lie to other people. I don't lie to Instagram and things like that. But sometimes I lie to myself like, yeah, it's okay if I skip this workout or yeah, it's okay if I, you know, don't follow up on my commitments today, right? But if I'm not going to follow up on my on my commitments, don't tell myself that I'm doing these things, right? So being honest with ourselves is the most important thing. So I, I love that that's something that you've made a priority and I'm super happy for you. And I think that, that, you know, like you hit it right on there is a lot of times when we lie to our, when we lie to ourselves, we're not even recognized. Like we don't even know that we're lying to ourselves. We believe the lie we tell ourselves. And that's when the awareness key is the polarizing difference. You know, when I was like, okay, I'm teaching everybody all this amazing stuff that I did do consistently for years. But now that like, I have this, you know, like I just got into my addiction, my addiction transferred. It went from drugs to work out to work to, you know, like it's this fluid thing that I constantly have to become super aware of. And I constantly have to say, okay, is this my enthusiasm or is this my addiction leading the way? And, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, whether it's your addiction or your ego or whatever it may be that gives you those lies that you believe instantly but if you sit there and you think about it and you're like, okay, wait a minute. If you, if you just stop and check in with yourself, then you don't allow that ignorance or that unawareness to continue. And that's when, that's when it's hard for people when they're like, but I don't want to believe what's really happening versus what I want to believe what's happening, mm-hmm. <laughs> what I'm telling myself. So, so that's, some, yeah. that was the biggest turn for me. I was like, okay there's something broken or dislodged inside and you're like, okay, I I have to get to the root and not just the symptoms. Yeah. So what are some of the most important habits or what are some of the most important high value tasks that you have to do for yourself every single day? Self-care wise, not talking about business. I mean, honestly, and this is like, I mean, I was so, I was in such a deep depression um, for a while that like, I mean, sticking, making a schedule and sticking to it. Like it sounds so elementary, but you know, like every morning I'd wake up, I'd get out of bed, I'd make my, and this is like not every morning, like this is when I started building back myself back because it took a while. Um, for me, having a day-to-day schedule, knowing what I'm going to be doing, um, time blocking my tasks, uh, which include personal self-care and, you know, from four to eight, I have my son every day. I don't do any work. I don't answer work calls. Um, It's me and him or me, him and his grandma and his dad comes over and we have dinner. And like, it's just like my family time. It's undisrupted. And that is, and I don't care who you are. I'm not taking a call during that time. Mm. And it helps like I know. And so what I'm doing for him is 
he knows that he's a priority and that he has my undivided attention. Um, the other thing too, is just, you know, my, my routine, my morning routine sets my day. I wake up, you know, I, I wash my face. I brush my teeth. I have a little snack. I get my stuff ready. It's like a, it's a ritual for me, right? I go work out, which skyrockets my, my energy and my hormones for the day. And then I come back and I sit down, I eat lunch and then I work. And before it used to be like, I rolled out and we just start working right away. So, um, I have this poster on my wall that I add, like it's right beside my door for when I walk out of my bedroom and it has like a picture of loyal on it. It has his handprint. It has these thank you cards that people have sent me. It has like these little, little nuggets of reminders of, okay, you know, you, you've shined in these people's lives somehow, let them shine in yours. And mm you know, just small things. It's the small things that add up. It's the small things that add up. Every small win matters. And these, and these small wins consistently executed over time amount to massive results, Mm -hmm. right? Like Mm. you staying loyal to your commitment of not answering a call, regardless of who it is, when you're with your son is going to add up over time because it's going to deepen that relationship with him. Obviously, um, you know, me staying loyal, And committed to my meditation practice is going to help me become more aware and more conscious and more focused and more relaxed every single day. And that compounds on itself. So you're exactly right. Like those, those little things really add up and it's in every single facet of our life, whether it's money management, whether it's relationships, whether it's health, right? Because it works both ways. Either Mm -hmm. you eat healthy, healthier 1%. Or you eat unhealthier one percent because if you drink, you know, two beers every single night, or one one extra beer every single night, or you eat one extra bite of ice cream every single night, those are going to add up too. So the compound effect is either working in your favor or it's working against you, and um, that that's that's amazing. Like that awareness around that and all the things that you're doing that make you happy and fill your heart with peace and joy and get you closer to your goals and really doubling down on your purpose and all the things that are bringing you fulfillment, right? And giving you those good feelings because Mm -hmm. it's just going to continue to add up from there. I mean, it's the same con it's the saying of death by a thousand paper cuts. One paper cut isn't significant, but if you keep getting it over and over, it's, it's excruciating. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to move a mountain and you take one handful of dirt a day, And this is what I, I, so on my fitness app, I have mindset and we talk about this stuff a lot. And I'm like, look, a little bit every day will build your mountain. And, you know, you just, you have to decide whether you want to look at it as a positive or a negative. It's the same self-talk, you know, it's, it's not just what's in your head. It's what's behind your head. And when you hear that negative voice, you're just like, "Mm -mm, not today. (laughs) And, and you have to acknowledge that and know that that's not you. Yes. That's not who you are. And yes. that's just going to test you to see if you really are going to be disciplined and you really are going to push through and you really want what you're going for because you you just have to believe in yourself ruthlessly and mm-hmm. like uh, unapologetically. And people, I've, I've walked, I've distanced myself from some family and I have let go of lifelong friends over the last few years because it just, it didn't, it no longer was a positive way in any way what served me in my life and where I wanted to go. And time served isn't a good enough reason Mm -hmm. to, to keep something or somebody in your life. And I sent them away with love and, you know, one has circled back and I said, look, I would love to see you again. I just want to make sure that you know that I'm always going to prioritize myself and my family. And, um, you know, they, we, I set different boundaries. And mm-hmm. it, it feels good to see them find themselves too. So, mm-hmm. you know, whatever you focus on is what's going to amplify. Mm-hmm. Whatever you focus on is what's going to amplify, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever you appreciate, appreciates. Oh, yeah. And whatever you resist, persists. Yeah. Yes. But I love what you said about, you know, your negative thoughts. That's not you, right? And mm-hmm. And it's 
it's easy to change your thought patterns when you're aware of it, but it's impossible to change your thought patterns when you're not aware of it. Because a lot of us identify with these thoughts. Like when we have these self-sabotage, self-sabotaging, limiting beliefs in our head, negative thought patterns, regardless of what it is, like we identify to that and, and we don't realize that we're not those thoughts. So like being able to acknowledge those thoughts is so important. Being aware of those thoughts is so important important. Yes. And, you know, as adults, we just believe that that's who we are. We're like, nope, that's, that's me. You know, like I can't do this. I'm not worthy of that. Um, why me? And the question should be when you hear it, you're going, okay, well then that means that I definitely should. Absolutely me. Don't need a reason for it. Just do it. You know, and, and it's, I don't know what that voice is. Right but that voice is a fucking liar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I know that, okay. And the more that you're aware of it and the more that you push it, not push it back, but counter it, you're like, Nope, this is what I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. It's like, you don't need to go to the gym today. And you're like, Nope, actually I do because it makes me feel better. Right. If you know, like, and so if you understand that that's not who you are and you can push back, that voice gets quieter and smaller and quieter and smaller, it still will pop up occasionally. But you're training that, that you are not that voice. You are capable. And whatever you decide to do, you have to take action. You have to do it. And you're allowed to fail. You're allowed to fuck up. You're allowed to hurt and cry. Um, And that's part of the process. And as long as you know that you're in the process and embrace the process, all these kids want to skip the process. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can you can definitely train that voice to be your your freaking biggest rock you know um, cheerleader too. Yep, your biggest cheerleader and your biggest ally. Everyone wants to skip the process because we live in such a instant gratification world. Everything is so easily accessible. Whether it's one click on Amazon to buy anything you want, or you know obviously TikTok videos like you just watch it right immediately. You don't have to mail order st- brides. Everything right. <laughs> so and and you talk about the process. You talk about the journey, right? When you get to the top of the mountain and you accomplish your journey or you cross that finish line, there's always going to be another mountain to climb. And realizing that we're never going to be completely satisfied, which you know you would think is a bad thing, but it's really a good thing because it helps you embrace and fall in love with the challenges. Yeah. And really appreciate the journey and the climb up the mountain, right? And it also helps us be more present because, you know, when I'm 80 years old and I'm worth, you know, $20 billion, I'm going to look back. Get a boy. Oh yeah. At least when I look back and I say, damn Zach, I wish I was, you know, 30 years old again, like recording podcasts from my living room, going to the beach and training for Ironman competitions. Like I was so much happier with X amount in my bank account than being worth $20 billion, you know? So keeping that in perspective is is super important. So let, that's great advice for anyone that's listening, man. Just like really, really fall in love with the journey, embrace the challenges and appreciate the process. You know, that's like, that's literally why I've been able to do all the things that I've been able to do is because I have discovered it in my journey and something, you know, when I found CrossFit, when I found uh, Olympic lifting competitions, when I found competing at all, when I started to do business, these things just like sparked something in me that like, I was like, Ooh, I have no idea what I'm doing, but it makes me kind of tickled. And I'm so intrigued and so interested that I, and I just followed my spirit. I didn't know that like I was really doing exactly what I should be doing. People were like, how did you do all this stuff? I'm like, I just said yes when everybody else said no. And I, I said yes to what I loved to. And I didn't know that I loved it. I just had a, a crazy interest in it. And like recently my life has changed significantly because I just um, partnered up with this company that I had no idea about. And I tried their product and I was like, this is amazing. I left a sponsor for this company and I'm having the best time of my freaking life. And it, it literally is changing my life because of how I feel. And this has been a big change in me in the last month. Um, it just, it, it was right. Everything's fallen into place. And I, because I've just been like, okay, I'm listening to my spirit again. And when my spirit says, Ooh, this is fun. It makes me feel good. Spirit, not ego. 
And that's when I know that I'm on the right path. And I don't know, you know, it's like, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how, you know, like I'm going to figure it out somehow, but I don't have to figure it out before I do it. I jump in and that experience you know, learning and growing and starting and then evolving is what makes you you. Mm -hmm. And it what makes you become an expert and it what makes you find the next thing that's going to tickle your soul. But if you're sitting there waiting in your living room to find your passion, you have failed mm -hmm. <laughs> because you haven't tried. And I tell people, I'm like, there's no such thing as failure unless you quit. Mm -hmm. And Everything else, as long as you learn a lesson or it shows you something, is successful failures. And I will gladly fail every freaking day if I love what I'm doing. Well, wow, that's such good advice. I, because I've done the exact same thing. I failed so many times. So many projects I've tried since Big Brother have failed, which is okay because it led me to where I'm at right now. And the only reason why I'm super happy and proud of everything I've accomplished today is because of all my failures in the past. And I wouldn't have been here today if it wasn't for those failures. So that is just incredible advice, you guys. If you are, and finding your passion isn't more so finding your passion, it's finding out what you're not passionate about, right? Like trial and error, figuring out what you don't like gets you closer to what you do like. And like you said, as long as you never fail or as long as you never give up, it's impossible to fail. And Christmas, I know you're super tight on time. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hop on the Life Coach Act podcast. Say, this was an incredible conversation <laughs> and I'm just really happy for you and I'm proud of you for all the progress and growth and humility that you show. And I know it's going to inspire a lot, a lot of the audience and the listeners today. Everyone, I'm sure you guys all know who Christmas is. <laughs> I'm sure you all already follow her on Instagram, but shoot her a message on Instagram or Twitter. Let her know that you enjoyed the podcast or you didn't enjoy the podcast. Um, Christmas, thank you so much for everything. I really do appreciate you you coming on today. Oh my gosh, Zach. I, I love what you're doing with this. And I think that, you know, you took such a traumatic situation and experience and you're making it a, a place of hope and love for people that, you know, are, are struggling. And this is really, really beautiful. And I feel like you've really hit um, something that can speak to people. So thank, thank you. you for including me on this. Appreciate it, Christmas. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to linking up again soon. You too, Zach. Bye. <laughs>